Hi, kindergartners. It is Mrs. Brousseau back with another text set to share with you. And this is the last text set of this year that I'm going to share with you. So we have um, had at least a sample of every text set um, that was included in our kindergarten um, read aloud books. So I'm super excited that I at least got to share one um, example of, of a book and a text set for every single text set in our collection. Um, this text set is called Learning How to Be Yourself. And it's not supposed to be the last text set, um, but I decided to save it for last because uh, the book that I'm gonna share with you today fits really nicely with our school theme this year. And so you'll find out about that in a minute after I'm done talking to you about each of the other books that we're not going to read. Um, so Learning How to Be Yourself is the name of the text set. And um, this book is called The Pig in the Pond. And um, it is about a pig who really, really wants to go in the pond with, um, with the ducks and the other animals that are able to be in the pond. Um, but doesn't think that she can because pigs don't swim. Um, but one day she just decides to give it a try. So the message in this book is uh, uh, don't be afraid to try something new. Um, you might be surprised at what you can do that you didn't think that you would be able to do. This book, um, Three Hens and a Peacock. So um, in this book, a peacock shows up at the farm and the hens are really jealous because the peacock gets a lot of attention. You might know that peacocks um, are pretty beautiful. They have really beautiful feathers and they're not seen very often um, at the farm. So the hens get pretty jealous and they really kind of want to be the peacock um, and do what the peacock does. But the lesson they learn in this story is to do what what they're best at doing because what they do is really important when they are laying eggs on the farm. That's a really important job. Um, the next one we're going to talk about is called Ruby the Copycat. So it is about a girl named Ruby. We know a girl named Ruby too, but she's not a copycat. <laughs> she loves to be herself and do her own thing. In this story, Ruby um, goes to a new school and she's not feeling very confident in herself. So she decides that instead of being herself, she will copy another girl in class. And so she tries to dress like the other girl, talk like the other girl, and do all of the things that the other girl does. Um, but the teacher, her teacher, um, helps her to discover that being herself is the best person that she can be. So she learns how to be herself instead of trying to imitate someone else. Um, this book, I think we read this book toward the beginning of the year. It's called I Like Me. And um, it is really, really the message in this book is just about um, liking yourself and liking all the parts of you because they make you, you and also taking good care of yourself. Um, and another uh, uh, message in this book is that if you make a mistake or if things don't turn out perfectly, um, like yourself enough to try and try again if it's important to you to be successful in doing that. Okay, so the book that we are going to read is called Harold Finds a Voice. Harold Finds a Voice is by Courtney, uh, hmm, I don't know how to pronounce Courtney's last name, maybe Dykemus, I'm not sure. Um, Harold Finds a Voice is about a bird, a parrot named Harold. And um, the reason I chose to read this book to you is because our school theme this year is Your Voice Matters. And so in this story, the message is that Harold's voice matters and it takes him um, a lot of uh, learning and trying 
in order to find his voice. And before he finds his voice, um, he tends to imitate other people's voices. So this author wrote this book to give people the message that um, you really need to try to find your voice and not just imitate other people or think what they think. So think on your own and find your own voice and speak up for what you think is important. Um, so I love that this story matches our school theme so well and I'm going to share it with you now. Harold finds a voice. Deep in the heart of Paris, in apartment 4B, there lived a very clever parrot. His name was Harold. Ring, ring, ring. Harold was a gifted bird. Burble, 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 burble. Can you see in this picture why Harold is making a ring, ring, ring sound? That's an alarm clock. So he's imitating the sound of the alarm clock. And here, burble, burble, burble. I think this is called a percolator. It's kind of a way to heat up water to make coffee or tea. Goal! So Harold is near the TV where someone is watching soccer and he's imitating the announcer. Whee! Imitating the blender. Frizz, frizz, frizz. Imitating the, looks like a phone that's vibrating maybe. Ding! And imitating the sound of a toaster. He could hear any sound just once and copy it perfectly. When Harold heard something beautiful, he simply couldn't resist the urge to repeat it. Vroom, vroom. He loved the sound of water most. Shh, you hear the shower? Shh, flush, whoosh, whoosh, whoosh the washing machine. There was only one problem. Harold was tired of repeating the same old noises. Hello, 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 hello. He often wondered what other sounds were out there. So he only knows the sounds that happen in apartment 4B and he's wondering what other sounds are out there. Who do you think that is? Harold's owner? Mm-hmm. And it looks like the cage door is open. Early one morning, Harold saw a chance to find out and took it. Harold couldn't believe his ears. The world was full of beautiful sounds. Everything had its own voice. Vroom. Chup, 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 chup. Flip, flip, flip. Honk, beep, beep, oh, wee, oh, wee, oh. ding, beep, honk, beep, beep, honk, beep. There were big voices. Oh. And small. Alert. 
There were cheerful voices. Plunka, plunka, plunk, plunka, plunk. And sad voices. Ooh dee doo. And even soulful, sniffly voices. Sniff, 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 sniff. It seemed that everything in the world had its own voice, except Harold. I must have my own voice, he thought. It's got to be in there somewhere. It's now or never, he decided. He took a deep breath and... What was that? What a horrible noise! But then something wonderful happened. Flap, flap, flip, rock, rock, flip, flap, rock. What a great voice! squawked the other parrots. We heard you from miles away. Bravo! Clap, 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 clap. That afternoon, Harold's new friends listened to all the voices he could make. They wanted to hear more and more and more. When it was time for dinner, Harold invited them back home. Harold taught his friends to make all the voices from apartment B, excuse me, apartment 4B. Of course, Harold was still the best alarm clock. He made the best kettle noise. He was easily the best washing machine. And he was the best shower. But his own voice made him happiest of all. Rock! So I love this book and I hope that it um, inspires you to make sure that you use your own voice and that you speak up. You speak up for yourself and you speak up for others and you use your voice and your words to make the world a happier place for you and for those around you. Thank you so much for tuning in to listen. And this is our last um, read aloud of the year. So I won't see you next time. <laughs>